Hey, this is a <laughs> cracking story uh, for a Melbourneite, Mark. Um, uh, uh, of course, you, you, the great race in Melbourne, the Melbourne Cup, uh, we all love. We all stop for the Melbourne Cup. Uh, it's not just a Melbourne thing, but the uh, Victorian MP Dan Tien has, has spotted the fact that, at, as it's currently scheduled, Parliament's supposed to be having <laughs> question time while the Melbourne Cup's on, and he's pushing for change. Here's Dan Tien. We've got to bring Liberal Party and the Labor Party together to make sure... The Prime Minister moves question time on the 1st November of Tuesday. Could you imagine at 3.03 I have to get up and ask the Prime Minister a question that goes along these lines? Prime Minister, who has won the Melbourne Cup? (laughs) <laughs> the first Tuesday of November, I think he meant, Mark. But uh, I'm tipping we might see some bipartisanship here. Mate, it's, it is... Dan Tan's 100% right. No, I didn't think that sentence was going to come out of my mouth many times in my life, to be honest. But I, 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 I reckon it is un-Australian. I think what he should do is wheel a little television out in question time and have everyone watch the race. That's Australian. But as you said, as a mm. Melbourneite, I'm seeing it more and more as well. It's like there, there is so much hatred for not just the cup, but, you know, horse racing in general. Um, I actually think this will put... This is a big issue. I think this is actually a very important issue. This will put Albo in a very tricky spot because the lefties hate horse racing and he just wants to constantly pitch to them. I think this is actually... This is a really clever move from Tian here, it, uh, which, again, is another sentence I never thought I'd say. <laughs> it reminds me, Tim, of a really Australian story too. Back when I was working for the Foreign Minister, there was a long National Security Committee meeting of Cabinet in Canberra over some pretty serious issues that were happening around the world, but also the Adelaide Test uh, was being played uh, <laughs> at the time. And uh, every now and then, a staffer from the Prime Minister's office would come on and and drop some extra notes to John Howard and John Howard would advise the (laughs) National Security Committee of Cabinet that Warney had got another wicket. (laughs) You've got to have priorities, Chris. You've got to have priorities. I'd just say, just hold question time as usual and give them some incentive to hurry through it. No Dorothy Dixes, no theatrical, you know, uh, posing, no no long speeches. Just ask a question and get it out of the way. (laughs) Now, now I want to go to US politics because, interestingly enough, uh, Melbourne Cup Day will be the day of the American election. Election. I wonder if they'd, they'd, they'd postpone the American election so if I could watch the, the <laughs> Melbourne Cup, yeah. anything's possible. But I, I want to show with you and the viewers the, the latest words of wisdom from Kamala Harris. Now, uh, the, the, you've got to savour every word here. This is Kamala Harris uh, being interviewed on by Steve uh, Colbert. What would the major changes be and what would stay the same? Sure. Well, I mean, I'm obviously not Joe Biden. Um, I know. And so yes. that would be one change yes. in terms of... Yes. But also, it, I think it's important to say with, you know, 28 days to go, I'm not Donald Trump. Wow. And, and so when we think about the significance of what this next generation of leadership looks like, were I to be elected president, it is about, frankly, um, I... I I, I love the American people, and I, I believe in our country. I, I, I love that it is our character and nature to be an ambitious people. Tim Blair, give me your thoughts on that. <laughs> it's very inspiring, Chris, uh, to me, because n- now we've got a universal get-out. And, Mark, Mark, take notes as well, because every so often when you're doing a live TV cross or even presenting a, li- a live television program, you might zone out a little bit and maybe lose your way and get confused. Well, all you've got to say is, I love the Australian people. <laughs> They're inspiring. They know what to do. And apparently that's that's considered an answer. The weird thing about this whole scenario is about that impossibly stupid answer to a very obvious, and, you know, she could have predicted the question... And the reason she could have predicted it, she was asked on another show yeah. earlier that day the same question. It's unbelievable. But sadly, uh, that is all she's got going for her. She's not Joe Biden and she's not Donald Trump. She doesn't seem to offer anything else. And just before I get your thoughts, Mark, I, I want to show you the uh, the very reassuring words that President Joe Biden <laughs> has sent to the people of, Bi- of uh, Florida as the hurricane uh, bears down on them. No one should make the American people question whether their governments will be make this sure that this is acting on strikes. They'll be there. We will, all of us. Uh, God knows what he was trying to say there. But uh, it's a good thing that Kamala Harris is not him. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> exactly. Bring him back, I say, Chris. Bring him back. He actually made more sense, to be honest. I thought Kamala Harris was going to start going on down that path of, like, I was raised in a middle-class family. I thought that's where she was heading, but she, um, she went down some other path of nonsense. But what a crazy place we're at where the political rhetoric is, well, I'm not Joe Biden, and the, the audience cheers. Uh, when she, and then she says, you're not Trump. It, bizarre. It, this, it, it's a circus. It's so entertaining. Well, I'm not Mark Nicholson. Studio audience uh, <laughs> cheering. I'm not Tim Blair. <laughs> but, uh, thanks so much for joining us, guys. We'll catch you next week.